to your astrological nail chart report this is the peace dealer the very first thing that i wanted to look for that i look for in every reading is is this woman an alien and yes you are my friend not only are, are you an alien not only are you one of us alien gang okay but you also have something that i'm going to make a special video series on okay it is a huge deal it's a technique i created and i'm very passionate about you, my friend, drum roll please, are an ultimate legend. Boom. It is a huge deal. In fact, as an ascended Sagittarius rising being, you need to walk around like your shit don't stink after this reading. You have to be like, bitch, I'm a pure queen and I'm ascended. Kiss the ring. Dead stare people who look at you wrong. Like you have you have to you have to walk around like you on fire because you perpetually are like you, you literally an instrument of destiny. You're, you're 92 sad rising. Goddamn. So the cool thing is all sad risings born from 83 or 82 to 95 are all ultimate legends. I'm going to break this concept down. You have Pluto that rules the 12th in the 12th house. So what is an ultimate? The technique I created are when you have the ruler of your 12th house in the 12th, that rulership in its dignity makes you a lord of the 12th. It gives you lordship of the 12th. You rule your legend, the house of the legend, right? And so this ultimate legend represents your breakthrough of inhibitive unconscious habits and beliefs that form your spiritual basis of your lifestyle in the sixth that represent qualities at its highest transcendent level that only you can accomplish. So let me give you a story of, for example, a Sag rising with this, the gem goddess. Look her up right now. If you haven't heard of the gem goddess, uh, she's one of the most amazing Geminis I've ever met in my entire life. Beautiful woman, uh, super magical. Um, she's an ultimate. She's a Sag rising with this. And, you know, she's also one of the most popular YouTube pick a card, like YouTube personalities and pick a card readers on YouTube. That's an example. Like everyone who has this, there's evidence of this. They, they don't just have this. And everyone who has this has also some amazing aspects too. Like you have the North Node on your rising. I have this. I'm a Taurus rising with Mars in my 12th house in Aries that rules Aries. So the reason why this is a legend is if you think about the random probability for you to be born with that rising sign, that level of probability makes you legendary with the sun on pluto at that so unlike other ultimate legends here you have pluto power you understand the true nature of that let me tell you something i don't i listen to too much rob, rob explains or, or or comics explain but let me tell you something you are fu you're cold as hell you are legit I watch way too much anime, my friend. I watch a lot of science fiction. So, like, when I see aliens with superpowers, I go in. You not only have Pluto on your sun, this is so, oh, my God, this is so lit. Oh, my God, dude, your existence is so controversial. You don't even exist, my friend. Like, you're a magical fantasy creature that only exists. I, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I'm a unicorn. So, like, I resonate with you. I attract so much aliens. You don't even exist according to science. Like you literally just exist in science fiction and fantasy. So like you probably troll people on a daily basis. Your ability to psychoanalyze people on the spot is literally akin to just looking at someone and seeing through them with x-ray vision. I bet you troll the shit. I bet you trigger the crap out of people just by saying anything because it's so intently poised towards their buttons that may evoke the ego traps you see in them and you just obliterate that. Is it your intention to do that? Because you're not a Gemini. Gemini's intention is to push people's buttons. Scorpio's intention is to kill people's egos. Courtesy, of course, of Pluto. So uh, you don't inadvertently think, I'm going to kill your ego. This is just how pure you are. 12th house, legendary, transcendent, pure consciousness takes the ability of Scorpio to discern wisdom and psychoanalyze. And as a Sag rising, which ascends your personality, in alignment with destiny to actually be this creator goddess to actually be this visionary enables you in the 12th 12th to take your psychoanalytical ability with this pluto sun ability to see through and not only that mercury wraps your brain processing 
retrograde around this ability to see it. So if, if you weren't always aware of the details of what you see, Mercury ascends your vision to do that. You are a fucking gangster. I'm sorry. This, this is lit. I've read a lot of charts. So when I see stuff like this, that's precise, I have to give you props because you out here doing supernatural stuff that according to science doesn't even exist, but you exist. You, your literal existence is like a fuck you to the face of postmodern science. And that's why I'm like, yes, thank God you ordered this reading for me. Okay. This is my job. You have Mars trying this aspect. I want to really sit with the 12th house because you will spend most of your life misunderstood. Most people do not accept the level of psychic energy that you produce. Because one thing that I'll say about Scorpio, you people know things you should not know. I'm just be honest. Scorpio perpetually knows things that the audacity, like how did you, how did you even figure out I was feeling that? This is a deep psychological complex emotion I told no one. And now in a small talk conversation, you talking about what I'm feeling. Now I'm looking at you like you a whole witch. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the effect you have on people. People are wondering why they're talking to you about the weather and the way you talk about the weather details the crying session they had over their dead grandma. And now you help them alleviate the stress and all you talked about is how cold it is today you know what i'm saying like even the way you say things this is definitively a supernatural ability now we also want to take into account the transformative quality of beliefs that your visionary personality helps assist others in awakening because as a pure transcendent spirit queen with the god of the king of the gods on your moon are you fucking serious you have an eight degree marissa who are you for real are you like, who are you? Who are you for real? Fire Princess Marissa, because uh, Sag Risings are Fire Prince and Princesses are Magician. Who are you for real? Miss Ascended being Marissa, because I don't, I don't think, I don't, I, like, are you like, well, what's, what's the jug? What's really the deal? Are you a secret agent? Like, are you getting me in trouble? Why are you, why are you ordering this reading? I ain't never seen anything like this. Are you eight degrees Jupiter on the moon? I want you to watch, if I can find this uh, interview with Waka Flock of Flame. Waka Flock of Flame had mentioned that the God within him would give him advice and stuff. And I don't think he's seen his natal chart. He has Jupiter on his moon in Pisces. Remember, this is the same Jupiter that's on Kanye's son. And Kanye told you who he thought he was. A God. Okay. Hurry up with this damn croissant. So I need to say that because when I call women goddesses, they constantly tell me, oh my God, thank you. And then I have to be like, excuse me, that wasn't a compliment. That, that, when, when I say a police officer is a police officer, I don't expect the police officer to be like, thank you. No, no, sir. That's what you are. So like, yeah, you are, when I say you're a goddess, I mean that in the sense that your Sag rising is collective goddess level personality, right? You have the deity Pluto on your sun. You have the king of the gods on your moon. You are not only goddess level, but you have the soul of a deity. And I want to be very careful about how I say this because the way Greco Romans and ancients use the word God is not the religious spiritual way we use the word God. God is more of an eternal quality. You sit on a council of eternals. You have responsibility for the rulership of these aspects. Hence, how ironic the reading that I did before you was also a Scorpio sun Libra Moonborn 94, you both represent balanced wisdom. It's just you are the ascended being with this. I cannot emphasize enough how goddamn supernatural you are in the 12th, my friend. You will constantly pick up on things that can lend you to be gaslighted. Things being psychoanalytical properties of people's feelings and complex motivations within their psychology they're not even aware of. So imagine calling people out on that and then they gaslight you saying, I didn't feel that, but they're just embarrassed because you called them out on feelings that they didn't feel they had. This 12th house Pluto is like having a hidden camera in other people's emotions. This is very uncomfortable. So like you're seeing people put on this fake ass mask that society has conditioned them to wear because it rejects who they truly are. And you in the 12th house remind and awaken people to that misunderstood part of themselves you make a beeline and speak through this can make a lot of people very uncomfortable because the wild reckless quality of sag doesn't even care like you will ju you will just completely expose people straight up real time like scorpio has a dark humor like that so the more you embrace that the better because quite ironically just like who i spoke to who was born 94 with saturn and pisces opposite chiron and virgo you also like all of us since the 60s or really the 80s and 90s have the saturn opposite in leo i have saturn and cap opposite chiron and cancer so i really like 
I really respect the Saturn and Aqua opposition. Saturn and Aqua opposite Chiron and Leo is like being in a talent show. And Chiron and Leo is the vulnerability that you have creatively expressing your singing. You can hear the cracks of nervousness in my voice because I'm confident, but I'm not entirely sure. My confidence and just getting on stage makes me vulnerable because I have wounds on my heart that make me vulnerable when I express my heart. And then Saturn and Aquarius is Simon Cowell. It's like, you suck. Get off my stage. Like, this is so trash. It's like constantly going against this cold hearted opposition that reinforces more vulnerability and how you overcome that. It represents a strong heart and also represents how philosophically you're in a position to take the mastered knowledge of your talents that post Saturn return you've just liberated, congratulations, and go forward into aligning this bold healing. Obviously, Ninth House Leo Chiron means that you, in the philosophical approach as an ascended being who shows Ninth House people love Leo, you heal directly or indirectly through teaching and how you practice what you preach in your philosophy. When people look at you, people are inspired to come more vulnerably from their heart. An aspect like this is singing karaoke with the fullness of your being, like you're a superstar artist. Meanwhile, you, you sound funny. I'm gonna be honest. Like you, you sound, you sound like an American. Not you specifically, but this is an example because you specifically, you have hidden talents. Like now, the Scorpio square means you got the sauce, okay? But you might hold it back until now that you've kind of come through the Saturn return. But let's pretend for all sakes and purposes, just the Chiron Leo aspect. It's like you might be one of these American Idol contestants who are painfully oblivious to how bad they sound when they sing, but when people see you sing, they still have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like you, they look at you and you're having fun. They don't care. They, they're like, damn, for someone who's not that good at singing, you have so much confidence singing anyway. It makes me want to express myself and not care about being perfectionist. So in context to you, you probably might be an amazing singer, but you can keep that pure talent hidden in the 12th because of the inhibitive outside influences from the collective Aquarius and society, Leo, that keeps you trapped in the 12th house closet, spiritual closet with the sun. I once listen, I, woo, listen to me. I cannot emphasize again how legendary this is. I know two Sagittarius women that I am completely smitten with because they're just gorgeous in every way. And they have this aspect too. And the thing with the Pluto 12th is y'all have these secrets that like no one will know. So with the, so, so with one of these people, right. Uh, that I found out because, uh, their ex partner told me that, you know, Sagittarius especially is the princess or the prince. So what you find out about one of these people who have this ultimate legendary aspect is that what they were hiding from the public is that they come from a super rich family. Like this is someone who's actually very wealthy, but if you, if you, you, you wouldn't tell that by looking at them because they don't tell this to anybody. It's not that they look poor and they look broke, but like you wouldn't know they were that wealthy because this is the hit. So every 12, the hidden legend, ultimate legend of Scorpio in the 12th is absolute wisdom. And it's also the mastery of secrets. You have transcendent hidden secrets that especially around society that you may like for you with your son here, you might be aware of certain clandestine hidden relationship events with others socially that others will never know that you'll just be aware of in society or connecting things socially that if you were to tell people people would be like you're delusional but it's like no i most certainly saw this person cheating with this person or i most certainly saw this person look at this person this way or i most certainly saw these two people working you know in a secretive way and it didn't have to even be that kind of theme um but like you know just an example so 28 degrees is coming into this total mastery of psychological and pure strength. And of course, Pluto is going to really also represent the wisdom and legendary quality of you that others don't even know you have. This is the quality of wisdom that you have. Versus me that has it in Aries is more so the nature of legendary power and action I express. Uh, but yeah. 
especially relative to mine, yours actually uh, trumps mine because Scorpio is eighth house to Aries. So it's interesting how that dynamic works. But my friend, let me tell you, like you are one of the sauciest people ever. You you got the sauce on divine transcendent levels. Uh, so yeah, the moon on Libra is so amazing on Jupiter because your soul is receptive to the expansive social quality that you bring abundance to just by being there. So moon and Libra in 11th is going to help you understand where the right people in your social circle belong with you. 11th house Libra is the community of artists that cardinally move forward in artistic direction. It's social. So you're a social leader here. The moon here is going to help you understand what social actions balance this transcendent Scorpio quality of awakening. Because Pluto on your side means you're an awakener, you're like a Kundalini goddess. Okay. Which you'll see in this article here once again that you must you most definitely can feel free to reference anytime. Okay. And with that being said, the nature of Libra here as a moon sign makes you less retarded than most Scorpios. I I apologize. That was a horrible joke. Um, but there's a phenomenon with Scorpios. I've even seen this with air sign placements. But there's a phenomenon with Scorpios where y'all are too psychic. I don't know what to say. There's like, like too much of anything is a bad thing. Like, I'm going to just be honest. And sometimes y'all could be too psychic, especially before your Saturn return. I've experienced this with a Scorpio woman born 93. Beautiful woman. Crazy as shit. Beautiful woman, though. <laughs> and I don't say that disrespectfully to her. I say that with understanding. I'm, she's not crazy as shit. She's a beautiful woman. <clears throat> but. When I say crazy as shit, I'm talking about, oh, I had an intuition that you were talking to this person in the bathroom about unicorns. It's like, okay, crazy as shit. And I don't judge her as being crazy. I'm seeing that as her going through a Saturn return, having to deal with her super psychic potential, not enabling her to, to having to break through learning how to master that. And that you guys are too psychic. You guys will be so on point to some shit you weren't even there for. This can make you believe that you're on point all the time and you are, but sometimes Scorpio can mistake their fear and paranoia for intuition. So when Scorpio is on it, they're on it. The same woman who I said is crazy. shit has shown me amazing synchronicities when she's on it, but when she gives into the voice of her fear and, and doesn't trust those around her, it, it distorts it. And then it looks crazy as hell because it is now that's really no critique on the Scorpio. But it's something that's common to see with Scorpios finishing their Saturn return or just in general, because most water signs lack the ability to disassociate their emotions with the intellect of their logic. Air, moon, Scorpios don't really have this issue, albeit they may still go through it. I've seen Gemini moons and aqua. The, the woman who I gave you an example of has an aqua moon, but but she's legit, though. So when I say crazy shit, I do not mean that disrespectfully, whereas other people might. Uh, astrology has helped me understand a psychological process of everyone. So, you know, um, not to act like a know-it-all, but, you know, in your soul's connection to Saturn, the social receptivity and understanding of people's characters, moon and cap, I have, moon and Libra, you have. So moon and cardinal signs is soul power. You and I have very powerful soul power. I have Saturn, moon, Neptune, Uranus, I'm one of the most powerful soul power, period. You have Soul social power with Jupiter. It's a huge deal, my friend. The social charm you have moving into any room is legit. And Jupiter will help you expand your understanding to maneuver leverage and maneuverability and what more you can do. So this aspect of soul power represents your receptivity to people's characters. As a moon in Capricorn, when people do anything in an instant, I feel who their character is. I understand who they are based off of the integrity or lack of integrity in what they do. With Uranus and Neptune on Venus, you tap into this at a heart level. And this squares the moon, which I'll speak on, because it's tricky, but it's very lucrative here in Libra. So in Libra, you're going to understand the nature of people's actions, but socially. Whereas Capricorn is going to focus more on integrity and the moon in Aries is going to look at, like all of us are going to see the same character, right? We're going to see the same person do the same thing. But the moon in Capricorn is going to be understanding of how it 
measures the integrity of their character. The moon in Aries is going to be like, how authentic is their character based on that? The moon in Cancer is going to look at that same action and be like, okay, this is how sincere their character is. And then the moon in Libra is going to be like, okay, this is how classic and charming this person's character is. You understand the balanced nature of social actions and how that aligns to reveal a person's character social libran ideals of common courtesy and social faux pas or social normative constructs you not only understand that it's tied into your legacy to kind of help transform and lead that and evolve that so what's really key here is not only with the moon you understand that but jupiter gives you this gift to expand more of this understanding and now in its connection to saturn in aquarius right this puts you in a position to align the strengthened knowledge of your attitude here now in Aquarius, which represents a very liberated authority of the knowledge of your abilities, right? Saturn in the third in Aquarius means that you have very knowledgeable abilities and you have the authority to influence how you teach these abilities. Your karmic lesson is to come into an advanced mastery of teaching knowledge or how people learn knowledge relative to the home foundation you create this library of wisdom, fourth house to your Scorpio sun. So with that being said, the power of your soul and this understanding of the social actions you can take to align more where you belong will be strengthened by Saturn. If Saturn didn't try it, you would have the soul power, but Saturn is here. So it adds mental strength. So you know more what direction you're going. I'm preaching. That being said, you have very powerful second house energy. Sagittarius risings and Sagittarius have superpowers. Aries is original power. Cancer is sincere individual power. Libra is social power. It's a superpower. And then Capricorn is collective God power. It's the highest superpower. So Sag Risings have Capricorn in their second house. And whatever is in your second is what you have. And so you have Capricorn. Capricorn is a superpower. You have superpowers. Cool. We have scientifically explained how you have superpowers. You are not the only Sag rising, though. So the superpowers you have unique to other Sag risings is that with Uranus and Neptune, you have the supernatural ability. Okay, and I shit you not. You have the supernatural ability. Uranus is the causal realm of the mind, which rules Aquarius. The ruler of your second house is in your third house which anchors the representation of the material universe in Saturn and the sign of the causal realm of the mind outside of time and space represented by Aquarius because the universe is mental. Then we have Neptune, which is beyond time and space representative of the imagination connecting you to the astral realm where souls and spirits reside and potential is infinite and instant. Okay. In the grounded earth sign of Capricorn, you have the supernatural ability to, with your mind, with Uranus, and your imagination, with Neptune, draw subconsciously, aligned with your heart in Venus, your heart's desires to manifest out of thin air. I will say that again. You are a manifesting machine. You have the supernatural ability to manifest anything your heart desires into reality from the ethers this is supernatural there is nothing normal about this this is a superpower you need to walk around like your shit don't stink you got it like that you got it like that yes you got it like that you want to manifest it there is hard work in capricorn you will put in boom it's there now it's effortless saturn has gone through this this is your capacity to manifest value and money and venus is very good in the second house you're able to polish this value and the integrity of your heart that you possess with venus and capricorn i can't emphasize how important this is because mars opposite this in cancer 
And the eighth house influences this very unconventional dynamic of how psychic you're able to point your desire to deal with other people. Venus in Capricorn is the integrity of heart and the value you have in yourself and the unconventional supernatural quality of how claircognizantly you can organize resources to manifest more of this value. Now, Mars opposite this is how you take the Capricorn practical value and invest emotionally towards the actions you take. Hence why Mars is in its fall in Cancer. Mars is instinctual in Aries. In Cancer, it doesn't like to take action outside its comfort zone. Opposite Capricorn that will just discipline itself David Goggins style and just run even if his legs are broken like this is gangster. Now, here's the thing. Mars and Cancer to me is like a dog that barks at someone who's evil. It's emotional, right? This is how you use your Mars. It helps you draw boundaries. If you just kind of feel something towards people, that's your Mars. Like, and then Venus is like, okay, it's not worth it. They're full of shit. Verse. Oh, okay, cool. Like I'm charged towards this person. I can trust them. Now the Venus square to the moon is your receptivity with the social aspect of the moves people take. But Uranus and Neptune will clash based on what you receive socially. So Moon and Libra is someone telling you, oh, my God, I really like your makeup. But then Venus and Uranus and Neptune is the square, the clash. That's like your body language reading their body. And you're literally feel the Moon and Libra is like, OK, they said that they like me. But the Venus and the cap is like their body language is saying they don't mean it, though. Their body language is saying they're kind of being sarcastic. And like you discern this real time. And now this is where in the 12th house you shock people because you just you just pull receipts, my friend. You're just like, oh, is this how you really feel? And then we're like, oh, shit, did she read my mind? But later it is MC in Virgo means that your legacy is analytical and social. And so as a visionary and ascended being, your legacy is to change society. People with MC and mutable houses, predictably, they're not meant to keep a job. So like you're meant to analyze the upper management and what needs to change and it's on to the next or you can move neighborhoods. a lot. So if that applies to you, please don't feel like it's a bad thing. You're not meant to stay in one job for, for too long. Um, this is it's, it's just a changeable element of your legacy. And it's going to really mark more how you fix elements of society around you and change the way the world analyzes facts. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this reading. You are quite the legendary ascended being and pure queen representative of of course balanced wisdom and purity you stay blessed as always and until next time congratulations on completing your Saturn return peace